Hey everyone, Ariel Adams and David Breton here with the Spending Time Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about what happens when there's a particular watch that you want, and maybe it's a little bit more expensive than you want to spend, or you just don't have that kind of money and you want to find an alternative. This is something which we don't talk about that much explicitly, because we don't want to make overt recommendations, but why not? Let's sort of um, show you how we think. So, right now we want to talk about two different types of watches from two different brands that I think have similar appeal and that is Panerai and Bell and & Ross. These are watches that aren't typically in the same conversation together. David, do you ever hear people talk about Bell and & Ross and Panerai in the same conversation that much? Strangely enough, no. Yeah, neither do I. But I'm going to make sort of the argument that the BR1 and the BR3 collection watches, these are the, the square shaped watches from Bell & Ross that came out in 2004, are a sort of, uh, not budget per se, but much less expensive alternative to various types of Panerai watches, so, such as the Luminor and Radio Mirror and things like that. Why? Well, these watches actually have a lot more in common than they have not in common. Uh, they have large military inspired dials. They wear similarly. Uh, the dials actually look similar. Um, it's not really a matter of who copied who. I think that there's a lot of parallel evolution, we'll call it that, right? between the dials that Bell and Ross popularized with the BR1s and the standard, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, the Luminor dial or the Marina dial or whatever, with those distinctive 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock hour markers. Just hour markers, no minute markers. And this doesn't represent represent every Panerai watch, nor does it represent every B Bell & Ross watch, but both brands have watches that have this type of look, and I would say that the Bell & Ross ones are, are sort of in the same wheelhouse. So if you, you know, are, are someone that has liked Panerai for a long time, but you see the prices, um, and you feel, you know what, that's not really something that I can afford right now, or, you know, something that I want, even on the pre-owned, I want to look less, the, the sort of argument of this is... Bell and Ross is a good alternative. Now, David, I want you to be the devil's advocate and tell me why am I wrong. Why is Bell and Ross not now, uh, maybe never, a a real alternative to Panerai? Well, the the first thing that springs to mind is, of course, the case shape. So not everyone wants uh, a square shaped watch or uh, thinks that it looks good on them. So that's the first thing. Uh, if if it's fine, then of course you're, you're you know it's it's a worthy. Um, um, brand and, and a few collections to compare to Panerai, but if, if you just you know you try it on and you think it doesn't look good on you, then there's nothing there's that's gonna uh, change your mind. Okay, that's one that's one reason. Not exactly the same shape. What else? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure where exactly Bell and Ross stands with in-house movements. Uh, I know they have some uh, pretty fancy ones, uh, way up high in the price uh, hierarchy, but. Uh, um, in the four to six grand range, uh, I guess Panerai in some cases have an edge. Okay, so you're saying that Panerai's in-house movements, of which they have uh, obviously some and many, uh, not every one of their watches contains an in-house movement, but you're right, a lot of them do. And Bell and Ross watches have ETA movements uh, for the most part in, in the range that we're talking about. So yes, if you are keenly interested in in-house movement, Panerai is the only option. What else? Uh, there's a little bit. It's it's funny I should say this because of course we all know that Panerai history is pretty problematic in some aspects and and very real in some others. Um, but <laughs> it's still it's still more than Ben and Ross, you know. Uh, I guess like a stormy sea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's this aspect. I mean, whether you want to believe it or not, whether you care about it or not, it's down to you entirely. But. Um, for some people, I guess, you know, Panerai having this uh, uh, Italian Marina Militare kind of vibe to it uh, makes uh, makes a difference for some. Okay, so, so what you're saying is Panerai has a real history, whereas Bell & Ross doesn't actually claim they have a history, uh, but doesn't come with, you know, actual vintage watches, actual relationship with military, at least historically. Panerai always has the really romantic Rolex story about how Rolex supplied a lot of their movements. But they don't communicate that. But they don't communicate at all about Rolex. Never ever have they I don't. heard. Of course they don't. But that's because they can't. Because it's a rival brand and it'd be very weird. 
Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying it's 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 hardly a part of the official history of the brand. It's something that us well, nerds know about, but it doesn't make a difference for most Panerai customers. But we're talking customers. about for people like us, right? And and when we're in sort of that watch nerd conversation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the piece having some relationship to history is important. You know, Bell and Ross is a company that I've always sort of explained is a um, it's like a fashion brand. Um, they are inspired by beautiful things that they like. And then they try to create watches that they say is a result of that inspiration. So they really liked aviation instruments, uh, cockpit clocks, things like that. And they said, hey, we are creating, as designers, products that inspire this world. They're not saying that these are watches that were designed actually for aviation professionals or military professionals, even though you definitely could. They're not saying there's specific models in the past. They're not saying Bell and Ross used to make this, this, or that. Um, it's, you know, it's, you know, one is a brand in Milan that is very much tied to history, and one is a brand in Paris, very much tied to this sort of sense of design and the beauty of design and watchmaking. And so they come at this from very different perspectives, which I think is okay. I think there's there's definitely room for both of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't really think that Panerai Evermore comes from Milan. I mean, is there any operation that still happens in Milan? Yes, for yes. They, they're, they're, they're main, not, not related to the movement manufacturing, but the no, brand, design. the design, all that, that's that's in Milan through and through. Mm. I had no idea it was still there. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, a lot of people don't. It makes sense. Okay, so now let's transition over to the argument about why Bell & Ross BR3 and BR, BR1 watches are in uh, an appreciable way, decent alternatives to various types of Panerai watches that we like. Let's do it. Okay, so I think that the bold, legible wearing experience is something you get with both. Of course, both brands are going to have models we don't really like, but for the most part, I mean, you've worn the BR1, the BR3. It has that big, masculine, chunky wearing experience, you know, of a lot of the Panerais, it feels like an instrument, yet it still has a a sex appeal to it, where it doesn't feel nerdy. That's a lot true. of uh, the, the the fact that you can customize with a lot of different straps, and that the same case looks good on different straps. They they of course have that beautiful taper to them on Bell and Ross, uh, Panerai. I guess it depends on the strap. The ones that that, that come stock don't. But both the watches. Um, are cases that can that are very versatile. I mean, you can put a bunch of different straps and it looks good. There's a lot of watches that are very similar. It's just about finding the right flavor. They're all legible, and they all sort of evoke a similar type of lifestyle. So I think that you can see the same type of people wearing like a BR3 or a 44 millimeter wide, you know, Luminor or something like that, right? Like you could take one of those watches off of wear and swap it with another one. I wouldn't be like, whoa, well, what's happened there? I'm not saying that they look exactly the same, but you don't need to change your personality to wear one or the other. Yeah, no, I, I see your point. Yeah, absolutely. So Bell & Ross has, you know, sort of gone in a lot of different design directions. And they sort of find the sweet spot in this, I'll just call it vintage inspired uh, instrument dial which ends up looking you know very similar but little tweaks do you want matte hands do you want polished hands do you want no complications on the dial you know do you want maybe a big date and Panerai similarly has a lot of variations on the same thing uh, theme I believe that the Bell and Ross ones in some ways are a little bit more fashionable I um, mean here you have the the camo one and they have ones that are you know two-tone and stuff like that and they just I think Bell & Ross sort of has the edge on the fashionability, but Panerai does have a core look, which is un undeniably great. Uh, you know, just by us looking at these, do, are you drawn to one or the other? Like, do you say, like, I would only wear this and not this one, or are you kind of open-minded at this point? I'm definitely not one to the exclusion of the other at all. Right. Okay, now pricing. I'm looking here at the least expensive... Panerai watches, which are the, the, the logo base, which are um, about just under just under 5000 bucks, And they have a manually wound ETA movement in there. And this is, this is just, I'm just looking at the screen at one of these watches. There's a bunch of them. Here's the base logo. Um, all of a sudden, they don't show the prices, but I know that this is a... Oh, it's 4750 There we go. It, so, yeah. So, yeah. 4700 
let's look at a Bell and Ross. Let's go to uh, uh, let's see a BR1, which would be a slightly larger size. It's a 46 millimeter case. Let's see 5, here. 5,300, 4,800. Yeah, it's about the same. Okay, so in this regard, this is some 10th anniversary limited edition. Um, I want to find one that isn't. I still think that the Bell and Ross one beats it in terms of price. I still do. Scroll a bit down. Hmm. That's interesting. It's as though I had a lot more pieces. Uh, Why are they on not? The... Do they just not have a lot of BR ones they're making right now? All right, let's look at this yeah. one. So this is the BR three ninety two. This is what I would say is sort of similar. It's different movement. Um, well, let's very let's... similar. Let's not look at this. This is a ceramic case. I think that's the wrong comparison to make. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. Here's one. So this would be sort of a better comparison because they both have steel cases. $2,900, $4,700. So almost $2,000 difference. That's a lot. Yeah, that's not insignificant. It's very significant. So... Now comparing these two, you have eighteen hundred dollar difference. The Panerai one and the other one, I, I wouldn't say there's a winner, but that is a big difference in price. Plus, you know, considering like pre-owned and stuff like that, uh, the price is getting even, even you know more affordable. And there's a lot of pre-owned Bell and Rosses out there for now. So let's do let's do the ceramic one because I think that's a little bit interesting because I now have a ceramic Bell and Ross that I've been reviewing. This the BR three ninety two Night Loom which has the really stripped down dial, very similar to Panerai, no minute markers, $3,800 in the black ceramic case. It's got a little bit of a unique strap. It's, a, it's kind of a, it's like a calfskin suede strap. It's, it's a premium strap. I don't know if it's a $300 strap, it's a premium strap. Let's look at for a similarly equipped Panerai. What do you think uh, that will cost for a, for a one with a ceramic case? Seven, eight thousand. Let's find out here. Let's go to the let's go to the radio mirror collection. So yeah, basically we we should point out well you know on the note of the steel ones that the the, um, the Bell and Ross had a base Salida movement at SW three hundred basically, and the Panerai has been recently updated to feature not the sixty four ninety seven hand wound at a base caliber, but now their P six thousand in house caliber. So you do get the boasting power or the opportunity to boast that you have uh, uh, an in-house movement, which I doubt makes you know that much of a difference in such a base watch like the like the uh, uh, base logo uh, Panerai that we were but looking at. But us watch still. nerds still get excited about in-house. We don't even know why. We may not need it, need it, but we get excited about in-house movements. Let's be honest. Uh, okay, so here maybe. is here is a Radio Mirror Ceramica. This is one of the only basic ceramic cased uh, panorize on their website right now. The movement is an in-house one, I believe. 45 millimeter wide case. Uh, where is discussion of the movement? It's not a really good website, is it? You have to click on technical details, I guess, uh, to the top right of the screen. But that oh, is there it is, but it's, it's, it doesn't mention really. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy wow. moly. Oh, here That's we ridiculous. go. Oh, because oh, it's the OPX. Oh, which is you, not in house. You know that's... what that means. Walk, walk. <laughs> it's like they're hiding it. <laughs> Sorry, so that's... we're on the Panerai website right now, and that's... we're looking at a product, oh. and it's okay. And this 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 button doesn't even work. Okay, they, so they this really is... don't want you to discover this caliber, do they? <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> okay, so um, the Panerai six four three, which is what we're looking at, that has the OPX, which is basically a Unitas movement in there. It's eighty three hundred dollars. Oh wow! Textured dial, so it does have a textured dial. So I'd say the dial is a little bit more expensive, and it's a radio mirror case. So this is forty five millimeters wide. Um, the other one's forty two millimeter wide square. So they're actually going to wear uh, similarly. So now you're seeing more than a double price difference. Super expensive for the Panerai. Super friggin' expensive. Matte black ceramic, matte black ceramic. I mean, these watches Same. are cousins. Okay, yeah. right? Super Luminova on both. Yeah. So the the <laughs> with with a twenty eight ninety two, the Bell and Ross actually has a more sophisticated movement. 
that's automatic that's versus actually manually true. wound. And so, uh, yeah, you see. So I, I'm not trying to disparage Panerai. They make beautiful watches, you know, no doubt. But I'm trying to sort of evoke the sense today that if you want a particular look or a design or you know, like a feel, you don't need to go the one route that everyone else goes. There's always Good alternatives. Boy. There's a feeling that a lot of us want. When we, we have a collection, we have different watches because different ones have a different wearing feeling. The problem is sometimes collectors get so sort of they get tunnel vision and they think there's only one watch out there that that satisfies that feeling and you know oftentimes that's not true absolutely yeah. i mean okay. let's just just talking about value i mean 8000 i understand it costs 8300 because of the way panerai collections are structured and obviously they cannot charge the same amount of money for a ceramic case as they do for a steel case um, but still there's something not right there you know when we're talking about a 3 grand over three grand uh, premium just for a ceramic case. When you actually get like a down <laughs> downturn or you know like a downscale movement uh, with a unit as opposed to an in-house movement. So this either should have an in-house movement or a way lower price, in my opinion. The radium here. I think I think you and I agree on a, on a lot of different fronts here. So I'm looking at some other watches here uh, to try to compare a few others. Now the Luminar Dues, the price here starts to go up a lot. These are great watches. These are thinner Luminar cases. Yeah. Let's look at this one. It's just the time. It's an automatic. I re I reviewed one of these and I really liked it actually. Yeah, they're 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 lovely watches. Ten thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Now here's a different. Here's the Horo Black, <laughs> which I have to say, if I was in the Bell and Ross marketing department and someone said, "Hey, let's call a watch a Horo Black." might say you might want to rethink that <laughs> but it's horrible, this is a nice man. looking watch yeah micro blasted steel that's cool yeah look at that nice high high contrasting dial love it even little details which I like look at the date disc they made a date disc that matches the exact color of the uh, of the dial not just white or black is this a sandwich dial I think it is it looks like it right hmm Hard to say. Could be. Could be. Um, two yeah, overlapping. Two, two yeah. overlapping inserts. So this mm -hmm. is a sandwich dial, which is something that, that Panerai, of course, popularized. Yeah. So this has a a layer of black loom with a with a sandwich part on top of it. Um, probably a pretty cool watch. Thirty four hundred dollars, even though it's actually a limited edition of nine hundred ninety nine pieces. Okay, here's some Instagram shots. Not bad looking. And then we have the Due, which again is also a very good-looking watch, ten thousand five hundred dollars. I'm wow. just one. I'm just again. It's this is we're we're getting into close to three times the price here. Yeah, I mean you do get an an extremely thin caliber, which is very very impressive. It's a four millimeter. Uh, was it a micro rotor? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, this it's has a micro. micro rotor. Rotor, yeah. Okay, you, you're right. It has all that stuff. But the the question is. If you are if you are wanting a look and a feel, because it's not saying that you can replace the Panerai experience, and maybe the Due is not the best model to compare with the Hora Black, but I'm just trying to say that brands stand very well when they when they can say no one offers anything even similar to this at this price. Like Richard Mille, for example, like everyone knows the prices are extremely extremely high, but no one can say well you can get the same type of experience in a less expensive product. When you can, and there are watches that offer a similar experience at a dramatically lower price, the brand which is charging more is sort of on check that they have to offer more, or at least explain the value proposition. It's a great place to be when no one offers, you know, seemingly as much for less. But with Panerai, I'd say there's a lot of brands that offer really good values for less money, and it definitely puts Panerai on notice they have to assert the value proposition better. Yeah, I think you know. I think something that's holding Panerai back is is that it has created this massive following who's very, um, very aware and very critical of every tiny little bit of change on every you know every iconic range or iconic collection like the base or like the radio mirror or whatever. And they really have figured out. I mean, the followers. Uh, you know which movement goes goes with which case and which dial and what what price and so on. 
So they cannot just do this blanket solution of either lowering a price or place, uh, placing in-house movements in everything and so on, because they are somehow cornered in a sense, and they really are as though you know having a little bit of a trouble modifying their own products, which is strange. But Andros can do whatever they like. No one's gonna say, "Hey guys, that's not cool. You're not you're not supposed to place like a bronze case in that." They can totally do whatever they want. So speaking of bronze cases, I just want to make a yeah. comparison here. So I'm looking at three different bronze watches that are on Panera's website. They're all <laughs> very different prices. <laughs> um, the Bronzo is one of those popular watches that, how should I say this? It's like one of the few Panerais that isn't available in stores and that goes for a premium. I don't really know why, but right now it's it's one of those exclusive, really hard to get models. So. I'm looking at the Panerai Luminor Submersible 1953 Days Automatic Bronzo 47 millimeter Pam 671. Retail These are price, going for twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. Okay, twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars on the quote-unquote open market. Retail price is fourteen thousand four hundred. And notice that this very similar model, that as far That's as also, I know, only has a different dial that went for ten thousand two hundred dollars. That's also trading for over. 20, 25,000. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Same. So then we go over to Bell and Ross, and we have here the BR392 Diver in bronze. It's also a limited edition. 3,990 bucks. <laughs> okay. Both of them Holy are moly. 300 meter water resistant, uh, you know, dive watches in bronze. Similar wearing style. The Panerai does have the P9000 automatic movements. Um, other than the fact that it has a power reserve of three days, which is about one more day of power reserve than the ETA 2892 that is in the Bell & Ross, I don't really know that the in-house movement offers more functionally speaking. They both have rotating bezels, you know, very different designs for sure, but I'm just saying, if you wanted to have that cool bronze watch experience and you wanted that look, I'm just not sure how a collector says the you know this this price premium is, is worth it at least this is how I look at it it's entirely possible other people look at it in different ways but I measure these things based upon these these sort of evaluations of inherent value I don't take demand into consideration it's not important to me it's not important to me because right now on the market there's always alternatives so if I want the bronzo the Panerai one I think is it is a cool watch but if I want it why am I spending several times over retail? Why don't I be like, you know what? This watch wants me to buy it. It's because you at... want a Panerai. You don't want a Panerai Ross. It's, it's, it's priced for those people who are so hooked on Panerai and really like the look of it in, 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 in bronze. For everyone else who's not super hooked on, on, on Panerai, of course the Panerai Ross is a good do option. Do we ever ask why? What why? Why what? Why we're hooked on a brand? Well, you are not, and I'm look. not. Well... <clears throat> It's that particular look. I mean, it's not just the brand. The Panerai looks different than the Bell & Ross, obviously. It's, the style is similar, but the look is nevertheless very specific to Panerai. If you like the Panerai Luminor look, you're not going to be satisfied with anything else. But, at least. but does the I look wouldn't. need to be a carbon copy of what you have in your mind, or does it look deeper? I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's go to cars. You want a... A 911. Off, you want Let's a say you want a 911. Well, I was going to use a slightly different example. The 911 is really hard because, theoretically speaking, there isn't a perfect alternative to a 911 out there, and we're talking about dive watches. So well, it's thinking, a sports car, and it's a coupe, so you can still have like a two-door sports car. It, you know, just the same functionality wise, performance wise. Okay, okay, we'll say we'll go with the 911. It's just a look. We'll go with the yeah, 911. Exactly. There's just going to be some 911 fans out there be like, "What are you doing? How do you compare this?" The 911 is a a certain types of sports car. I've always called the 911 a, a, a motorcycle with four wheels. It's just a fun to drive sports car that theoretically you're buying for the engine and driver, driving experience. Now, do, do you have to get that with the 911 or are there not some other cars out there that have similar things? Not exactly, but you can get other cars out there that try to match that driving experience for a different amount of money, sometimes less. So the question is if you want that if you look look and feel, does it have to say Porsche on it, or could it be a different car, assuming that the Porsche ones are unavailable at a price you don't want to spend? 
I think it's I, I think it's the exact other way around. People get a 911 because they like the look. Of course, it's going to drive well, but the difference is exactly as much as the difference between the in-house movement and the Salida in the in the band Ross. Yes, there are differences, there are sub, subtle differences. You can appreciate the engineering and so on, but it's the look. And if you want a 911, you are not going to get anything else because nothing looks like a 911. You know, that's that's the point. If you if you just want a car that goes fast, you can you can you have you know dozens, literally dozens of options for you know any price going from a fraction of the 911 all the way to many times over. It's the same for the Panerai. Okay, if you so want if a Luminar, for, yeah, yeah. yeah so if you you're have going to get for that it. look, you're going for that yes. Luminar look, as you're saying. Then mm-hmm. what I'm talking about with these Bell and Ross watches, that I think are similar. It's not going to mean anything to you because you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're great, but I want that Panerai look for whatever reason. So you're right. I am not. My argument is not going to be particularly persuasive to those people. But yeah. if you if you like the lifestyle aesthetic and the sort of theme of this watch, I don't know why you need to be stuck to one hard to get model or expensive model. Yeah, I see what you mean. I totally see what you mean. It, it's and and I agree as well. You know, it, it's not a good idea. It's never good for you just to base your your purchase decisions on on you know over you know be, being over enthusiastic over a brand or design without giving others a shot. I, I genuinely believe you should try one of these on and see you know where four grand gets you with a balance draws and say and see where you can put the other ten grand that you just saved. Or you know if you're looking at the aftermarket premium, it's twenty grand. <laughs> let's, you know, difference. That's let's huge. look just for example at what eighty seven hundred dollars will get you in a Bell and Ross BR one. Okay. This is not this is by no means a watch for everyone, but this is I'm looking at the BR one instrument de marine. This is like a combination of a BR one and I guess a marine chronometer. <clears throat> and it's a very strange watch, but it's also super cool. So we're talking here bronze, <laughs> we're talking titanium, we're talking about wood. Do you remember this watch? Yes. Has yes, I the do. case is actually wood. Uh, the, That's well, pretty cool. I don't know where it went there. Okay. Uh, they don't have more. I think I think on on the website we have it, but I'm just trying to see what they actually have on the the Palin Ross website. You have a movement here that is a, a uh, I'm not sure which one. It's a different one. I'm just saying for for eighty-seven hundred dollars. Here we go. There's the case. Construction. Wow, that's a cool shot. Yeah, for eighty-seven hundred dollars, there's a lot more watch here in my opinion than a lot of the $8,700 Panerais. It's not that the Panerais are bad watches. I'm just saying when you're asking yourself about about you know how far you're going with your money. Yeah, I mean, there's this little video that we are going to lay over this uh, screen record where a, you can see... a student's desk, yeah. Where you can see... <laughs> <laughs> a watch <laughs> student's see desk, and they're like, you know what, that would be great for a watch case. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. All this layered wood and all, all these all these veneers and so on. It's It's pretty cool. There's a lot of work that goes into this. Yeah, I mean, look at this whole story just about making this this uh, case. I mean, I I I believe that it's it's super difficult to make it out of wood because wood is unstable, you know, based on humidity and how you how you treat it and how you machine it and so on. So the fact that it fits together so snugly and so well is is, is quite a treat actually, and a lot of work. We can see it here. It has to be. It cannot be mass manufactured. So you you can see here that they are placing yeah, so these one by one. Trying to see it. Yeah. yeah. That they are, you know. It's, it's really- I'm just saying we're going back to Panerai and we're not asking which is a better watch. It's not about that. They're both good watches, Bell and Ross and Panerai. The question is when you want a particular look and feel and w- or want to have a sense that your money is going a long way, I'm yeah. just saying that you know Bell and Ross is oftentimes not part of the conversation for whatever reason and I think it needs to be part of the conversation more. Wasn't part of the reason resale value isn't isn't that something that that was that was problematic for a while with Bell and Ross? I'm not sure, but it's that was problematic today. with everyone. And if you look at resale value for Panerai, you don't want me to go to eBay right now. <laughs> I certainly don't. Okay, you remember you remember what uh, what lives in Hong Kong in great numbers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Panerai watches eagerly looking for a home. That's true. No, uh, that's 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 the reality. But I'm I'm just trying to guess what what it was in pe- on people's minds when they said, "Ah, oh, no, Bandros, I have to be careful there." Well, I mean, look, I I think that 
in the past 10 years, a lot of watches have struggled with distribution. They've had periods where they've had, you know, high discounting or poor resale value or, or things like that. I, I, I don't know that it's fair to judge a brand because of, of temporary hiccups in, in the way they market their watches. I mean, we know that it's been a challenge for a lot of brands to figure out what to do. You know, it's neither, yeah, it's, sorry, it's, it's neither fair nor smart. I mean, if, if there are, there's, you know, if you can get something at a good price, you should go for it. And it, you should accept the fact that, of course, you know, you're getting a watch and it's going to depreciate in value unless you're hitting, you know, one of those, you know, 1% of watches that for some weird reason go up in value. That happens sometimes. But it, you're buying this for yourself. You're buying it for your own enjoyment. You're going to wear the heck out of it. So it's going to depreciate in value anyway. So, so, so yeah. I'm looking right now at the Belenross BRX1 Tourbillon instrument de marine. This is $170,000 cool. $170, of totally Too interesting expensive. watch that I'll never own or wear. Um, yeah. It's cool. I just If I had $170,000 to buy a watch, this is, you know, this is not <laughs> super high on my list. But it's, it's <laughs> awesome. My question is this. Does having watches like this in the sort of Bell & Ross universe upgrade the brand? Is there a halo effect just by having watches like this around? That's true. That's true. That's exactly what's happening. Okay, so you agree that watches like this tend to upgrade the brand because even though they may not be something you want, they demonstrate a brand that does take itself seriously as a watchmaker. It sure does, yeah. Th these ones and even more so the ones in Sapphire, those are pretty freaking oh, amazing. the Sapphire ones? So yeah. cool. Yeah. And they have stuff like this, which, you know, again, isn't my thing, but it definitely feels more inspired and it feels like Bell & Ross is trying to make watches for today. Whereas, as much as I love Panerai, I have no idea what their watch for today is. It's it's exactly the same watch as their watch five years ago for today and ten years ago for today. It's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. You know, I guess there was the BMG Tech, which is super impressive, but also at the same time very frustrating in the sense that I opened the Panerai website and the first thing I see is the BMG Tech. BMG and Tech. BMG tag, and I'm like, okay, this is great. This looks very fancy and so on. But what's the point? What's the end of value? I cannot buy this thing. It's it's it's, it's barely out there. Okay, so and here's then they the BMG had tech one. Now, just to remind everyone, what is BMG? Bulk metallic glass. And why do we care about it? Stronger than nature. <laughs> I really wish I, just I had a recording. Read it, you I just read that. it on their website. It's I really bonkers. wish I had a recording. You saying that? <laughs> Harder and lighter than steel. Glass. <laughs> Not just any glass, but glass in bulk. Metallic glass. Uh, a disordered this, atomic this, structure. You cannot even buy this thing. This is super annoying. Why not? Uh, can you? You can contact the concierge. Oh. I'm looking at it on the German website, and there's no way to... It just there's... says in German, you are not allowed to own this. I said it in English, but still, it's like super, super infuriating. Oh, now, okay, okay, well. Owning well. this is inappropriate at this time. 12900 okay, so finally there's a price, okay. So here, 13300 in the U.S. That's not so bad. I, I wish they made these in, like, the 44. Why do all of these have to be 47 all the time? They're so freaking huge. It's bulk metallic glass. It only wants to be big. It's bulk. It's a big bulk. Okay, so this so now, now it's interesting because now you get to look in detail and you'd be like, okay, is the BMG if you can get it a good value compared to the Carbone, <laughs> <laughs> the Carbone Forge, twenty three thousand dollars cool. for. That's cool. Well, it's interesting. It's you know, it's interesting movement. I've never been into this particular type of dial skeletonization. It's cool, but it's not me. Hmm. I like it. The Bell and Ross. It's a cool watch. I think the strap, I think the case design and the way that it integrates with the strap is awesome. I just, I could use this dial uh, if it was like a, just a three hander. Like, I don't need the chronograph. What? I know, right? But in this instance, you have a Bell and Ross, which is $10,000 more. So I guess the point I'm also trying to make is it's not like Bell and Ross is a budget brand compared to Panerai. They have a lot of watches that compete in that same price area. Now, do you think that at Bell & Ross, they see themselves as alternatives to Panerai? Like, do you think they have this conversation? Like, when they're designing these watches, are they thinking that way? Or are we drawing a, a sort of a, a comparison that they might not even be thinking? 
I'm not sure what they're thinking of when they're designing this, these watches, but I, but I bet they would be very happy to be considered as the, as the alternative to Panerai. I, I have a sneaking suspicion they could live with that because okay. that's a huge opportunity for them. Fair enough, fair enough. And again, I, I have to credit Bell & Ross that even though some of the watches they come out with are not for me, I definitely like that they're trying to do modern things. Like, again, I'm looking at a different version of the BR1X, or the, B, the B, I'm sorry, the BRX1. And the BRX1 is supposed to be like the cockpit instrument for like today's modern um, aircraft, which is kind of an irony because I have all digital you know instruments anyways. But it's <laughs> it's supposed to be modern. Is there a modern equivalent of a Panerai trying to do this? And if not, should there be? Because I don't think the BMG with its traditional case is really the modern thing, even though it uses modern materials. I think it is. I think it is, J precisely because of the mo modern materials. Um, that, that's Panerai's way of saying, hey, we have arrived to the, to the 21st century. I mean, this is a titanium case and, uh, for the band Ross, and Panerai has been making titanium cases forever. So, so there, I think this BMG tag is actually pretty impressive. I, I find it their own way of trying to be 21st century. So, so I, I, I guess I'm, I'm sort of sympathetic to that. Okay. Okay. So for you, it's okay to have a familiar look, but in in a, in in a, in a sort of unique, maybe novel material. For you, that's modern. Yes. And for I'm you? Trying to figure out the difference. Okay. Once the skeleton. Um, no, no, I definitely want to look and feel. I want mm -hmm. a watch that has a visual design that evokes something about today. Now, here is the BRX2. Right. Uh, this is Ooh. the Turbion Micro Rotor. This is the movement that they call in-house, I believe, or at least it's definitely exclusive to them. This has a combination of sapphire crystal case and steel. This is... Sixty-five thousand bucks. This is, the, this is the Bell and Ross. Where does something like this? How does this help you appreciate the brand or not? And the dial. I mean, the dial is not, you know, super you know what? unique. Do you know what would help me appreciate the brand more? What's that? If this was thirty-five thousand, then I would be like, God damn, you guys are doing, you know, like some aggressive work here. When it's when it's sixty-five, I'm like, okay, it's it's. You you guys are not exactly what it's not done, you know. It's it, it's not, it's you know for a freak I understand sixty five or sixty or something like that, or for like an old start and more into beyond fifty grand or something like that. But when you can get turbions these days for thirty five forty thousand tech higher you know higher O two notwithstanding, which is even less, then of course this is not the same as the tech. That's why I'm not. That's why I'm saying it's excluded. But you know, an Angelus diver a diver tourbillon is like what thirty five, thirty thousand, something like that. So for sixty five, this is this is up there. Okay, so, so you're I, right. For a for a tourbillon, it might not be the best value out there. Yeah. But again, you know, we know that a lot of people spending over twenty or thirty thousand dollars on a watch. For them, the difference between thirty and sixty thousand, it's not as it's different. Not. It's not as big as the difference between three and six thousand dollars on a watch, right? So for well, them, it's not that would, big of a deal. I would much rather. And get a thirty grand tour beyond and buy myself like a yellow gold day date <laughs> on the side to wear than just buy one tour beyond, you know. So, I agree. For me, and, I like this, but I don't need the tour beyond. I'm just like the tour beyond. I can take it or leave it. Yeah, and also at the same time, you know, uh, the the reason why at thirty thirty five thousand this would get a point across better is that you know we were just looking at those O uh, ones and O threes that cost like three four thousand dollars. So. If the brand was super aggressive in its pricing all across the board, then I would say, hmm, okay, okay, they are consistent. But 65 for a band is is more about, you know, it's more about the premium than than the aggressive pricing. So now, it's, Panerai it's has yeah. their own tourbillons. Price is I'm trying to think if they have the prices on here. We have it on a blog to watch, of course. Do they have the tourbillon? Yes, they have some of the tourbillons here. Okay, so <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> What's making you cough there, huh? 108 grand. Holy moly. So th this is interesting because these watches, I don't think these are made anymore, but these have tourbillons that you can't see them. Well, at least not on the dial. For for 108,000, I wouldn't want to see my tourbillon either. That's, it's, you know. Of course not. Of course not. 203,000 for what looks like a Girard Perigo. I think that is a Girard Perigo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember that watch. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, let's look at that. Would you would you mind looking at that? The shirt. Okay. So this is the Radio Mir Turbions 42 millimeters, the Pam 77 077. Is it an actual? Is it an actual shirt Paragon movement? Seriously. No. I don't know who made that movement. Unique edition of two units. That's not unique. <laughs> Uh, I am pretty sure that's honestly. Okay, so even the okay. even the case on it looked like that. I guess the point that I feel I've successfully made is that Pandora and Bell and Ross are a lot more similar than I think people give them credit for. They definitely have their differences, and for me, if I was in the market for this sort of chunky, you know, military style look that's definitely elegant and doesn't feel like it's trying too hard, but has personality, I think that I could put Bell and Ross and Pandora in the same category. And if budget was an issue, which it is for a lot of people, I would look a lot more strongly than Bell and Ross. And that's the point I wanted to make. That's a good point. I will I will make the point that it is indeed uh, a shared paragon movement. <laughs> I just Googled it. <laughs> okay, so we were right. <laughs> yeah. Watch nerdism. Yeah, but I, I see your point. Your point is much more important to the masses, I guess, than a, a unique edition of two pieces. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I see what you mean, and and I by all means uh, encourage people to try and think out of the box a little bit and try and define a little bit better what is it that they are looking for in a watch. Am I looking for the name and for my friends to recognize that I got a Panerai? Well, of course, then in that case I will have to get a Panerai. But if what I want is a versatile looking watch with uh, with a quasi iconic design and so on you know there's a lot of other options out there and some of them will cost half or third as much and you still get a lot of watch for your money just the same everyone thank you so much for listening to this episode of spending time we'll talk to you later talk later bye everyone